Gracious ones, the agency of the Holy Spirit is little understood by the children of men, for the Holy Spirit is in diverse places, scattered abroad as the seed of God over the field of the world, everywhere to be a potential blooming of the fruit and flower of spiritual contact. God is nigh unto men, but because of hardness of hearts and crystallization of concept, the matrix of the Divine One is seldom seen or comprehended. The imaginations of men trample upon the holy flowers of the Spirit, and the beauty of life within is seldom perceived. Those few who possess the power of vision and the contriteness of heart, enabling them to magnetize the grace of God, are often the victims of men's foul images, whereby the reality of their comprehensions and visions are trampled upon as though they were mad. In this hour, in the evolution of this planet, the crying need for realization of the Holy Spirit as the agency of power is for understanding to flow into the minds and beings of men that they may rightly perceive the action of this agency of God. In this connection, let me spell out for you all that the great King, the majestic Holy One, He who is within the Holy of Holies of the universe, does not venture forth into form in order to court men for the great flame which he carries and bears would snuff out all life and extinguish it on the instant. God has tempered his divine majesty and mien so that mankind are able to perceive him as he extends himself out from the Holy of Holies into the form consciousness of 
universal manifestation, bearing various motifs, the great divine one peers out from behind nature and from behind the majesty of the God flame in the heart as it pierces out through the eyes of the spiritually anointed. Men and women of great perception are able to see God in varied manifestation and the agency of the Holy Spirit is an old friend unto them. But those with less perception, and there are many and varying degrees, are often bereft of this comfort which heaven is wont to convey, but which men are not willing to sacrifice for. The lesser images are often so paramount in their mind that they cannot even let go long enough to enter into those meditations of the heart and soul which like the angelic harps conveys messages of divine relaxation unto the soul of man for a long time now the victim of karmic arrows and hostile maneuvers by man against man and by force of negation against all that is beautiful, lovely, and holy. In this day and age, as we listen to the tender calls from the hearts of the contrite, as we perceive the world order, often in a continuing round of deterioration, we are moved and constrained to call unto the powers of light and the lords of karma to bring to mankind by whatever necessary means the law requires some understanding of the grace of God and the imminence of the Holy Spirit. Cathedrals throughout the lands peel out the bells of mercy, the intonations of life, bell-like calling unto prayer. Yet outside of a moment's contemplation, a turning from the sordid qualities of the world to listen to the Angelus, men remain unmoved and the balance of the hours of the day and of the night are surfeited with human musings upon the psychic experiences of the world and the wonders of the human psyche. Those qualities which they feel will advance themselves in the eyes of men and few are content to let their case come to judgment before the eyes of God the merciful the just the pure the holy and the gracious the Lord of heaven though he be content with all of the victories of his majesty is not content to let rest the tender lambs of his flock that are thus straying in form, in density, in a state of imperfection and unrealized potential. God has sent forth the wind as his emissary. God has sent forth the great mountains to show mankind height above depth. God has moved and constrained the hearts of men through the pangs of adversity, calling and summoning men to awake from the lethargy and the sleep of the senses. Yet God is nigh, even at the door of the heart, through hardness of heart, through a lack of the contrite attitude, through a lack of willingness to serve. Men are satisfied with husks, and the beauty of eternity, the treasure of life goes untapped save by the few. The great white brotherhood in its gigantic outreach of service to the Godhead has continued to serve to illumine mankind. Yet, unfortunately, each opening which we make in the curtain of night which men have woven around themselves is often attacked by the very ones who say and profess that they yearn to do God's service. 
They strike out blows against the very instruments through whom we outreach into the world. They understand not how that God is desirous of calling all home, pardoning all for each error, and bestowing upon every son the victory of the one Christ example, the light by which all things were made. And as I speak to you, I wish to convey the eternal muse of God, the eternal aum melody, the melody of perfection that is weaving a constant matrix of power and purity around the world and all that God hath made and all that God hath wrought within the soul and heart. God weaves his matrix every day and his hand lovingly fingers each strand every hour and God continually hopes for the adaptation by mankind of the great eternal comfort of his holy will, his holy love, and his holy wisdom. Bestowal, bestowal, bestowal is ever surrounded by vestiges of human fear. Men are often afraid lest in embracing doctrine or tenet they should listen to the voices of darkness. Therefore, because they perceive darkness and they hold fear of darkness, they do not always embrace or recognize light even when it is manifest to them and so frequently that which is darkness is accepted and that which is light is rejected. Can any among mankind excel God? Can any among mankind excel his plan? I say unto you and I say it well. They know not what they do and in the great courts of our brotherhood when we have discussed the mission of light coming to a darkened world we have often said they know not what they do and this old and familiar phrase existing in our brotherhood before the master the Lord Christ offered himself as a sacrifice did itself come easy to his lips as an oft-repeated phrase concerning the children of men. Yet the need of every hour is to know, to do, to dare, and to be silent. The silent ones are so few, and yet the word must go forth. But the word has gone forth and it is a continuing tone like a bell that will not be stilled and whose peal is unending in such wondrous song as an angelic choir the hearts of men are moved again to make a new inquiry then into the meaning of life. They say we know. They say we do. They say we love. We are the few. They honor self and not their God. And squirm and squirm beneath the rod. I come today then to awake and say to all thyself forsake and find thy peace and power then within the very heart of men illumined by the flame, of men whose tongues can set the world aflame. I am the Lord thy God, vesting thee with freedom's power and power to see that God's own laws are pure and clean, 
they proclaim to all what might have been, what can be, when men will see and list to God from eternity, who speaks in silent cadences to wrest from men all in sincerity and shadow and pang and bring them to his feet that he may convey to them all that is complete his hand upon their head as comforts flame his hand upon their heart in God's own name that they may go forth and teach the world to wake they may go forth to teach the world to make a new heaven and a new earth for the former things have passed away. Truly, it is not God who is dead. It is the world who is dead and as a dried branch broken from the tree of life, tumbling as a weed across the plain saturated with mortal strife. These need the flame I bear. These need our holy prayer. These need the saturation of the Holy Spirit. These need, and law requires, some new outpouring of God's fires that life may breathe again, the newness of the dawn that life may breathe again and from now on the angelic messages of peace, goodwill to men, a prayer that sends men forth to battle, not our brothers or one another, but sends them forth to Armageddon's plains to do battle in God's name with all the fault itself and not the men. For tis the deceit of sinful men that lays claim to judgment seat and desires to make a plan so incomplete for life streams above themselves, yet they know it not. And in their darkness, they cast out one blot upon another soul whose stain returns to them to be made whole. Cleanse ye then your hearts, the vessel within without, and watch the fashion of the man, no doubt a Christ to be, as he unfolds the matrix of eternity. I am the Lord, Maha Chohan. I come with all the Chohans round about to tell you now that God without is within, a flame, a being rare. His fragrant presence now is here. His manifestation is comfort near, but in the truth of brotherhood that expands to Godhood, and thus the call of monk or laity is all upon the altar lane. And God's sweet beauty in all life appears, and life no longer then is vain. For reality transcends unreality. And the brotherhood, finding answer to their prayer in men, observes as then Men attain, and in attainment bold, turn not back to look on Sodom old, but gaze upon the new Jerusalem fair, descending in all glorious light throughout the air. Resound, ye elementals, hear our voice, for life itself is victory's voice. Lo, I come! to do thy will. Lo, I come, the king resurrected still, and ever and anon I go, as Paul Revere rode 
to warn of the foe. So now the hoofbeats of our steeds are heard throughout the land and man's needs supplied by God demand. Say and proclaim to all, Awake, I come, I come, I come. Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. The voice from out the silence of the Chohans of the Rays shall be heard in this land this day, and those who are able to hear shall hear, and those who wax dull of hearing shall wax dull, and to him that hath shall be given, and to him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath, until the dark wax to blackness, and the light shine in the Father's kingdom, and by the power of contrast, men perceive and seek their self, their true self that speaks, that is silent in its voice, that is silent and yet speaks. Tis no noise you hear, but a rushing mighty wind, the wind of refreshment of comfort, of clarity, of might, and of power, and of the Spirit of God that through all churches seeks to breathe forth its law. His law proclaims to all and is the answer and the call. I thank you one and all. I am the Lord Mahachohan gracious ones of the eternal light. Good afternoon.
of God I am come, the eye of perfection, the eye of God that beholds all light and its emanations spreading from the center of his heart of light and pouring into the universe the radiance that will produce the boon of cosmic happiness now and forever. I am a being of light. Liquid light is that substance which runs as in rivulets over the soul of man to produce realization of beauty in its ceaseless outpouring. Mankind frequently, in the midst of their distresses, fail to recognize that I am always present in the universe as all good is manifest always and at all times. Behind the mask of imperfection, behind the sense of human frustration, the mighty tides of light and victory are pouring their ceaseless radiance upon mankind. Hidden behind the delusion and the clouds of Maya, the clouds of human creation, mankind writhe and grope as for the light, whereas the mighty power of God 
the great dynamo of cosmic perfection is ever in full manifestation and is never absent and never late from manifestation for those who will hold faith with God and almighty perfection that the power and energy of God will produce for those who respond to him all that purpose, plan, and manifestation which from the beginning of time, yea, from the beginning of the first impetus of creation has gone forth to accomplish his holy will. Unfortunately today, as in past times, mankind are prone to listen to the voices of discord and dissension. They are prone to hearken to that which can never produce perfection and freedom. They are constant in their application toward mortality and often fluctuating in their manifestation of the divine ideal. Now in this latter hour, we come once again to surround mankind with a full bloom of perfection, with a full aura and radiance of Almighty God in the hope that those who are able and can hear the voice of the Good Shepherd of the Muse to understand that the Divine One has produced the perfection of His harmony from the first breathing forth of cosmos unto the present hour. There is then an activity of great light in the strata of magnificence above mankind's head, above the head of human steam that seems at time to propel mankind forth into a miasma of pain and despair. Those who are able then to breathe forth this moment and always a holy prayer to their own divine self will find the wings of cosmic harmony manifesting their light radiance, raising mankind's consciousness and sense of being into a realm where God is. Then individuals find there is a resistlessness, a yielding to universal light, whereby their energies move forward with the speed of light distress vanishes and fear with all, and the comprehension of grace is assured the hearer and auditor to the divine harmony. However, we caution all to always abide in that sense and never yield, never, no, never to those voices of human despair those spreaders of mortal gloom that obscure the beauty of the divine plan. I am the fullness of the vision of God, the power of Zion's mount, the power to cause mankind to obtain victory. I am the full power of that driving vision that pierces my gloom and establishes the feet of the Christ upon the mount, cleaving that mount in twain, and causing mankind to see in the cleft of the rock that God has found a necessity in the manifestation of duality, but the duality must yield itself as the tides of life move on until there is a cosmic unity, the achievement of the union of common hearts and common bonds underneath the aegis of the Father's infinite love. That love is a challenge to men's souls, for that love sometimes manifests as a rod of chastening, as a rod of power, as a rod of love, as a rod of wisdom, and there is always ever and anon the presence of hope for the divine adventure, the hope that the cosmic sea will itself part as for the children of Israel when they were fleeing the pursuit of Pharaoh's hosts. 
Therefore, we say to all that in the great historical drama of this planet itself, there are any number of vignettes, manifest pictures of mankind's struggles whereby they have sought to overcome every obstacle and establish themselves within the domain of the promised land. Now in this latter hour, when the world itself is upon the brink of self-destruction, when mankind seek to sever themselves from all these conditions that have caused them such untold distress, the great white brotherhood is preparing most lofty activities to guide the youth and aged of mankind alike in the pursuit of cosmic ideals where the splendor of the image of the Christ revealed to every life stream does establish not only for this present hour but for all the great wonders to come the blessedness of hope and the full establishment of cosmic happiness poured out without limit upon the receiving soul who yielding himself to God neither slumbers nor sleeps but is awake in the concept of God who rocks mankind at times as a mother rocks a sleeping babe to quiet the turbulence of human fears and turmoil, the doubts as to that which shall be and assuage the great pangs of mankind's hearts by divine love poured out with such compassion as to encompass the universe itself with the splendor of God's image appearing. I am the fullness of that image in the eye of God. I am the fullness of that image in the I am presence. I am the fullness of that image in the surround effect of the Father's love. I am now and for all eternity holding that piercing vision of perfection that parts the sands before the eyes of man when in the midst of a terrible sandstorm obscuring the sun itself and I then provide a channel and a pathway of light into the infinite realms where the angels themselves do bow their heads in the sweetest of gratitude poured out to God for the opportunity to serve. And I call to you all to invoke that perfection which I am as the goddess of truth implies, that perfection which I am as the goddess of mercy implies, that perfection which I am as the goddess of justice implies, and that perfection which I am as the goddess of liberty implies. Thus, in the implication of the infinite perfection of God made manifest in the mind and heart, there is a sense of new direction provided from day to day whereby individuals can, as this messenger did declare to you today, literally lift themselves by their own bootstraps into a cosmic rate of vibration Whereas ascended masters functioning in these physical octaves, you can perform the Herculean tasks that are the requirements of the moment, providing to mankind a ray of hope as to cosmic possibility, as when through the veil of your flesh God appears. So did Enoch manifest his perfection and was not, for God took him. I therefore say to you all that the brightness of the coming of the Holy One within the veil of your flesh must sever the connections of your psyche and being to all of its former levity and insincerity to all of those dead men's bones referenced by your beloved Master Jesus as not only the lives of other men but as also the incomplete lives of yourselves in former embodiments and in this one when you did not live up to the high and holy standards which were given to you by God but walked the byways and thickets of life pursuing vain and evanescent pleasures and finding no surcease from pain in those sought for delights which did not produce the perfection for which your minds yearned, but rather left you with a bitter taste of ashes in your mouth 
as you bit into the seeming golden apple which did not contain the substance of eternal perception and direction. I therefore come to you this day to bring a new hope as a shield, saying unto you those words which God spake unto Abraham, Yea, I am thy shield and thy exceeding reward, which shall surely come unto thee as thy faith and thy plight, thy troth is made to me, yea, unto me and not unto another. That is made unto me, yea, and not unto another. That is made unto me, yea, and not unto another, which compels thy soul to its nourishment in sacred fruit within the garden and partakes of the tree of immortal life and breathing consciousness of God outpictured as manifestation above manifestation, as creator above created, as infinity above finite, as stars above the earth and the plain, ring out hope in a constant application of the great love and levity of heaven to raise mankind and cause them to cease their slumbers and their partakements of that which is of death raising them then into the celestial realms of cosmic accomplishment where God manifesting through time is the perfection of eternal reality and eternal sensation, the sensation of cosmic accomplishment, the sense of the word gone forth to proclaim, well done, thou good and faithful servant, Thou hast been faithful in a few things. I will make thee a ruler over many things. Thus I am thy shield. Thus I am thy exceeding great reward. Thus is thy faith given the wings of an eagle. Thus is the light of the sun intensified with the splendor of my appearing. I am the Lord thy God that shall deliver thee out of bondage into the infinite perfection of my eye. And my eye is too pure to behold iniquity. I am the sun of reality shining in its splendor that casts aside the outworn garment that has not produced the great beauty of the divine plan fulfilled. I am, I am, I am immaculata I am, I am, I am Cyclopea. I am, I am, I am reality, reality, reality. Breathing in form my flame, breathing in form my name, breathing in form my flame ascends. I am thy ascension, I am thy direction, I am surrounding thee with the great tablets of cosmic law. Graven within thy bones and thy being is the celeste accompaniment of infinite harmony. I am, I am, I am that harmony, expressing now and always the beauty of the appearing of the Christ. In the barren land shall the rose flourish, the stream shall pour forth and flood the deserts with hope, and the flush of the dawn shall rest upon all vegetation, and behold, it shall glow and glow and glow with a fervent heat, and the bush shall not be consumed, yet the flame shall mold and shape the soul until it escapes the cage of body sensation and wings its way as a dove of peace and hope back into the heart of God where the soul shall nestle in completeness until it go forth to produce the perfection of God in the aeons of infinite continuity unbroken in the light. I am, I am, I am Cyclopea. I thank you and I bless you with my radiance departing not but drawing closer as I seem to leave I leave behind me an infinite monumental understanding vouchsafed to you 
as an inward reality of the soul. I have touched you with the coals from the altars of heaven. May you change, transmute, and breathe upon this coal until it shall fire thy soul again and again with the understanding which I have given. I thank you. Consolation. I am come to speak the word of deliverance to the nations and to the children of men. I am come to amplify the abundant light, to bind up the wounds of mankind and to apply unguents to the soul, that healing may occur through straight paths for the feet of all men who need and require the guidance of the love light from the heart of God. All nature sings in awareness of the divine majesty. The voice, the light, the preeminence, of the mountain is upon mankind and the holiness of that mountain is the manifest aspirations of the inverted light within the hearts of men. Inverted for it is a descending light but converting 
all that is shadow within man to the ascending light, the light of the ascension. The holy will of God has shed abroad its beams across the span of the years and the centuries fulfilling the destiny of mankind in a spirit of human delay at times, but at other times set free from all limitation and moving mankind on by divine grace, agitating within mankind a greater desire to find peace and the commanding presence of immortality. I am the immortal flame. I am the resurrection and the life. I am freedom from fear, conveying grace to all who will hear my voice and know that I care for all creation with the boundless love of infinity. Yet the call must be answered not only from the level of the divine, but from the level of the respondent. Those who have heard the word must understand that they have a responsibility to answer the clarion call that echoes down the corridors of the years and pours its mighty tide of love into their heart. One precious moment in the presence of God is worth more than all of the span of mortal years scattered across the consciousness of mankind with decaying imagery and yearning for a touch of the vastness of immortality. We cannot preserve for mankind those sympathetic images which are linked to a banal sentimentality. We must preserve the vestiges of the immortal kingdom which are here and enhance them by the divine majesty recognized by mankind within their own consciousness. For unless the consciousness of the respondent and the disciple bears living awareness to our thoughts and our desires, they cannot derive from the tree of life the fruit of immortality, restoring the Edenic state and speaking to all, be free as I am. Out of the light I come and out of the light I speak. Out of the light I blaze my light and by God's grace I am complete. There is no need for men to fear for the power of the Spirit has through the centuries poured its essences in a series of episodes, lives without end, strung as iridescent symbols upon the great cycle of completion. Your lives individualized, each one resembling the cycles of eternity. Moments, seconds, strung upon the cycle of a minute compose that minute. The hours are composed of the cycles of the minutes and the days by the cycles of the hours, the years by the cycles of the days, the decades by the cycles of the years, the centuries by the cycles of the decades, and the aeons 
by the cycles of time flashing forth some little glow of infinity to compose a cosmic iridescence in the span of time. Yet the purpose of it all is to glorify God in manifestation, to deliver men from the evils of the years and the hates that have extended over the centuries that have crystallized and bound them to the wheel of life and given them no freedom when the great power that is within them has continued to call for deliverance and release from the pressures of mortal density, of thought, of feeling, of imprisoned splendor seeking itself in the great foreverness of God. I am come then this day here in the great west of the United States to set my feet upon the rock, yea, upon the mountain, and to say to the children of all generations who are able to hold consciously to my thought, the hour of deliverance for America and for the world is at hand. Which way will ye go, down into the dark denseness of materiality or to the glorification of cosmic purpose and the infinite freedom which desires to speak within your soul. I am come to give a new burst of cosmic impetus to the great cosmic purpose. I am come to free those who have been thwarted throughout the centuries by inhuman greed. They have sought to find release for themselves and in the empty void of being they have slumbered and slept and have not perceived that which is real, echoing forth constantly a great cosmic pulse, the voice of God speaking in conscience, in heart, in nature, and in mother-father principle. For each of mankind have been privileged to come through one and two individuals expressing some dim but forgotten memory of a cosmic union, the power of creativity, the father-mother principle. All have received this, if not manifest token-wise in outer form, then as a blazing reality above. Bear well then in mind that ye have a cosmic mother as you have a cosmic father and this principle of life that has given you all individuality is the power of love, wisdom, and power manifest now and forever for your freedom and for the necessary release of that substance and energy which is yours to qualify with that you may find in emulation of ourselves the gift of freedom today lying in your hand as close as that the nearness of God manifests if you will externalize it then you shall, and if you cannot summon the will to externalize it, then call unto me, and I will answer you. Call unto me and ask for my personal intercession. We have not denied to the sincere and to the seeker the boon of our assistance. We have extended our love from the hillsides of Judea out into the world of form, to the great plains of identity that stretch from sea to shining sea. We have bridged the mountains on great chasms of wind. We have gone forth onto the secret places of the earth, and we have proclaimed to nature herself of the dominion of God, and nature has heard, and tiny elemental beings denied by the intellectuals have themselves carried our breath and our love throughout the earth, bursting forth as flowers 
in the spring times of the world. They have carried the message of immortality to the ends of the earth. They have proclaimed identity and freedom, imprisoned splendor of the sun. They have gone forth and shared their blessings with all mankind. And sometimes only elemental life has taken note of the progress of the spiritual glow ray upon earth that has sought the transformation of the world in the mind of men. For in one sense, in a very real sense, all life is one. And if contamination ensue in any part thereof, is not the whole yet maimed and halt and unmanifesting the eternal purposes? Shall we then permit the single solitary lamb to go astray, caught in the thicket of human reason? and imprisoned there? Shall we let that one be lost? Nay, we shall seek to the ends of the earth where the uttermost farthing of our energy to find that which is lost and to save that which is lost. And our salvation is a return to the purposes of the plan and the exaltation of that purpose in man. Come ye then now and reason together with us, saith the Lord. Won't you please be seated? As we seek to have your reason dwell within the secret place of the Most High, it is to bring to the people of the world a greater awareness of that which they have intellectually sought to comprehend of divine grace. For many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called, but few choose to peer behind the word aspects of divinity and to see the great blazing reality of the self as it manifests within themselves. They seem to be bound by their own image of themselves in its minute limitation, whereas the great infinite plan expanding above themselves as the divine presence in its immortal sowing is ignored, and the masterful presence is denied, and the finite limitation is enthroned, and the idol must be broken with all of its limitations its pall of darkness and shadow. We speak then to the world not to deny their reality, the reality of themselves, and we utter forth our fiat here in this area of mountain and plain where nature thrusts forth her hand to enrich in the eye, the heart, the mind of man, and we say, let us look to the hills, the eternal hills, let us look to the great shepherds that come from the hills of spiritual attainment. Let us look to the Christ of every man, to the breathing intensified reality that has manifested in part through the manifold religions of the world, but that today seeks to enthrone itself in every heart. I am come with all of the love and counsel of the good shepherd to bring about a response in the minds of men that shall stir them as nothing has ever stirred them before until they are able to perceive that the living, unlimited, masterful vision of God for them is the self-same call which I heard and obeyed. When the little boy, Samuel, heard the call of God long ago, he responded also to that same call which I heard and answered. Will ye then this day and age, in the midst of all mortal vicissitudes, in the midst of all mortal grumblings and confusions, assert the dominant reality of yourselves and give it that breathing preeminence which it so well deserves? My challenge I fling forth 
and the wind shall bear it to the ends of the earth and the earth shall hear the sound of rejoicing for the Lord's voice hath gone forth in this day as in every age to bring forth fruit unto God and his wholeness the manifestation that is able to save the world from all of its confusions and banalities and exalt the spirit of God in man so that the crown may rest upon the head of all and all may recognize and feel that love which throbs from the heart of the universe unto the uttermost part thereof and brings to all the awareness of life. I am come that ye might have life and that more abundantly must be translated by the alchemy of being into a magnificent God being within you. Each one must bear the burden of God. And this is the lightest yoke that ever a son of heaven has worn. The halo of the love of God resting upon man as an essence rare. The halo of God, the very prayer of the angelic host, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, for heaven and earth are full of thy glory. And yet with this magnificent fiat going forth to render praise to him who is the ancient of days, we say the world is still steeped in its own stillbirth, dead in trespasses and sins, iniquities without number, and above all iniquities is the iniquity of man's denial, the denial of self. We have well spoken in the past that a man should deny himself. But this too must be understood. It is not to deny his good self, but to deny the human self that the God self may manifest. Interpretation of the law is the requirement of every hour and intelligence must expand itself throughout the universe until man can understand the plan as God intends. I am come then to bring you into the circle, the hallowed circle of breathing awareness where our brotherhood trembles the veil of reality before the eyes of the disciples and the very presence of eternity is manifest in time. The clouds of our glory that conceals not but reveals not save to the eyes of those who yearn and are willing to return to their first love, the love of God that prompted them when they first saw their own individuality in all of its shining splendor, a replica of the divine image, to say, Lo, I am come to do thy will, O God. Lo, I am. Lo, I am. Lo, I am. I have been, I rejoice, I see, I feel, I know, I am, I think. Yea, I essentially am God. All of that was preeminent. All of that was a breathing fire, the fire of reality that came into the heart altar and flashed forth its rays. There in the beginning, man exhibited the concept of praise and unity. Then came the diversity of heart when men began to feel the pangs of separation from one another as well as from God. And when from one another, from God. And when from God, from one another. And selfishness replaced selflessness and the vows at inner levels were forgotten and the days of the soul's praise when the joyful boundless spirit of man traveled over the earth over all that is terrestrial and brooded with God over the creation is forgotten the strands of holy reality are forgotten the ancient landmarks of the temple are broken the columns are fallen to the earth and shattered and the dust has risen as a pall over the centuries. Yea, the old images, they are no more. 
in so far as mankind goes. And the hungers of the soul have mounted and mounted and mounted with ever new crescendos of yearning and longing. And the response of the deity has been great. Yet only the few have escaped. One is taken and another is left. One is taken and another is left. One is taken and another is left. And those who are left are left to mourn, and they are not comforted. And our desire to comfort them has not extended itself into the bounds of their being and consciousness. And happiness has flown out the window of their soul because it did not contain the Lord God of hosts. And there was no room in the end of their being for me, nor was there any room in the end of their being for God. I and my Father are one, and in that oneness there is happiness and bliss and peace and all that which is eternal value. And all of the rest of manifestation is as but a pinch of dust cast into the visible world for a moment and then whipped up by the wind and scattered until it is not, for it has no coherence, no direction, no semblance of reality. The temple beautiful then has vanished upon the air and life itself is unreal. The scepter of power then must be reacquired in this age and all who will manifest grace, happiness, power and strength, all who will be towers in this day and age must acquiesce to the flame upon the altar of their heart and say of that flame, Lo, thou art my all, my blazing reality. With thee I can do all things. With thee I can be strengthened and there is nothing impossible unto me anymore because thou art in me, O my God. I am thy son and thou art my father. I am in thy mansions and thou art in me. Great then will be the wisdom of such a one as Solomon of old who builded him a house. So will that man build God a house, a place in which to dwell and there will be no blessed substance from Ophir or the farthest part of the earth that will not be sought and obtained to build this house of shittim wood or of whatever wood or precious substance mankind desires to find adornments of gold and silver and precious things will be built in that house, that house, that citadel of eternal being. For God dwells not in temples made with hands, but in that spiritual affluence, that confluence of being, which is immortal substance. There and there alone can the fullness of God be manifest. For all substance that is less than of the selfhood of God is yet in a state of relative impurity. And purity must be brought about by the eternal spirit and then all things in the world of form are purified as man himself accepts his reality. Yea, I say to thee, the word of old spoken in Jerusalem, saying, Woe unto thee, O Jerusalem, thou that stonest the prophets and them that are sent unto thee. There shall not remain one stone upon another that shall not be overturned, is significant of mortal substance, as it is overturned to make way for the building of the spiritual kingdom. And this is the reality that shall remain forever and forever and forever, for it alone is worthy to glorify God. And it is in this spiritual essence, this essential ingredient, that mankind finds their freedom and purification. And all form must obey such a one. The winds and the waves must obey. And life comes under the dominion of such a one, one who is a child of the sun and knows that each light ray from his heart goes forth to do God's will. Thus I am come. Thus, the peace-commanding presence is come. Thus, light and substance and faith mount as upon eagle wings. Thus, 
the warriors of the spirit overcome and God is praised. We have unfurled our banner before you this day and before the world. Our first address here in this building is now gone forth as a sowing for America and the world to make of one sheepfold and one shepherd a great unanimity of purpose to create a chalice of hearts where all can safely bask in a spiritual unity to draw forth and magnetize the fullness of victory for each life stream and to spread abroad divine light and love and power to the ends of the earth for the salvation thereof and the release of karmic debt to all who can in this age find forgiveness from the cup of our love from the cup of God's love from that cup magnet right within you the boundlessness of the spirit piercing the veil of flesh and shattering the matrixes of mortal illusion drawing nigh unto the grandeur of spirit and beholding God with eyes of reality I thank you and as God thundered from Horeb's height and from Sinai, I say, come out now from the wilderness into the promised land that the Lord thy God hath given thee. The promised land, the body of substance, the body of immortal worth. Come then into thy reality and the sense thereof. For I am come that ye might have life and that more abundantly. And this life is God's substance. Misqualified substance must be released and returned to the sun for repolarization. Only that qualified with the qualities of God can be utilized to build and construct the temple of the Almighty. I love you. I love you. I love you in all your blazing reality. And I am with you always, even unto the end of the age world without end Gracious and beloved ones, I speak to you tonight as of old, as unto knights and ladies, not of leisure but of love, and allegiance to our cause, to remember that we who hold the will of God in reverence are also aware of how that will, like a mirage upon the desert, can through false attention upon the world 
become as a mist upon the glass of being until reality seems dim and the din of human foolishness holds sway to evaporate the will of God from your mortal consciousness where it ought to also blaze forth the living power of reality. Now I am sure that you know that naught can do despite to the will of God in reality. But for you, as you give power to those conditions that are not the will of God, it is to evaporate in essence, in effect, the will of God from yourselves and to deprive yourselves of your immortal birthright. The right of man to be God is the most glorious plan of the Father, the bestowal of infinity upon the finite is the gift of the ascension held in hand before the individual has yet manifested it in actuality. You must then see that the holy matrix born in consciousness is the seed of God which sprouts in the garden of men's hearts to cause them to hold fast when all the world around them seems to be crumbling away as a piece of salt in water dissolving until it seems that naught is left and the savor goes unnoticed and unrecognized. Where then is the invisible reality of the spirit? Where is the thrust for valor? Where is the intent and reality of God's will made manifest? Where but in our octave and in yours as you accept the same hand of good fellowship which we have also accepted from those precious ones beyond the veil when we yet were in mortal form and manifesting the same reveries and nonsenses which you sometimes do and longing for the transcendence of life as you also do. Remember then that no man can in reality serve two masters. Either you will love the one and despise the other. Therefore, precious ones of God's light and love, know that our palace of light is always filled with devotees of truth, the lotus of perfection, which is the will of God. We feast upon the bread of heaven and we hold sway in the consciousness of infinite light and love. This infinite light and love is itself reality. Without it, you are poor indeed, for the treasures of heaven are the dream of God made manifest in the wondrous soliloquy of perpetuation. Perpetuation, precious ones, is the extension of your life, not only for a brief span into the realm of foreverness. To exist forever means to hold hands with eternity. If you think, precious ones, that you can build the shallow tower of Babel, the confusion of egomania into the heavens without coming home, beware. For well, the law does not permit it. It is true that even devotees of long standing have had some secret yearning or outer fluence, the manifestation of selfhood as they have conceived it without application to the will of God. As we dream now of the circle of fire 
with which we intend to surround you here, and see how that the circuit flows forth from heart to heart, we see it as a continuous manifestation, a cable connected to the heavens, a link in the chain of cosmic circumstance. Break it, and you exclude yourself. Hold it, and you maintain cosmic selfhood. There is no other way. The forging of our circuits here below in outer dimensions is for the salvation of the soul of men. And when I say the soul, I reference the oneness, the unity of God that seeks through all hearts to manifest the hand of heaven in the ageless splendor of his thoughts for and on behalf of his creation which he loves and loved from the beginning. Shake off then the dust upon the garments and remember that soil is unreal. Dazzling and splendorous is the garment of the Lord and as it contacts the body, the wondrous flowing essence, the electric spark, the fohat of cosmic truth moves wondrous miracles to perform of cosmic love. And we are able to say, here is our hand. I, Moria, commend you for virtue, but virtue that is bereft of reason, virtue that is bereft of power when it is needed, and virtue that is emptied of love is no virtue at all only a mere empty name. Therefore see that your banding together be one of essential spiritual truth and harmony. The power of hierarchy is one of extended command, extended command from one level of spirit unto another. There is never a question of command to the hierarchy, for all are both commanders and commanded. And therefore we say, let the teaching stand supreme as the goal-fittedness of the Spirit. The teaching and the teacher are reverenced, for God is both teacher and guide over the shoals of life. Thou shalt have no other gods before me, is in essence the great cosmic power of truth rebuking the iniquitous acts of man who seeks to exalt himself without exalting his God. First is the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. He is the essential power of goodwill. Without it, the outer self takes command and the God's self has a gentle spirit, yet so powerful, flees out the window, and the empty house is not the abode of the Lord. Whosoever then opens the door to God has humility and obedience and power and the challenge of the spirit that goes forth to perform in every age those miracles which we term Herculean. I am the Chohan of the first ray, and I am determined to set my teeth somewhat this night against those forces which seek to harass our expression through you. We tonight are activating a focus of power here which shall perform as a scintillating wheel. Let those who are nigh at hand and of the shadows beware, for the blades of that wheel are of light with diamond hardness, and they shall cut through mud and slime 
and decadence of mankind and shall roll as a car of juggernaut into the house of God. I say the time has come when Armageddon shall seal all who are willing to follow the Son and the Father and the Spirit in the orb of cosmic virtue, which is no sophistication or idle thought of some philosopher steeped in self-love, but is cosmic thrusts constantly going forth from the heart of God to vest his creation with the best gifts. He who would deny these gifts to himself would deny them to all men, for in the cradle of selfhood is born the infant Messiah. In the cradle of true selfhood is born victory. In the cradle of selfhood is born illumination. And those powers that shape mankind and perfect all in the divine essence, the great luminosity of spiritual power which goes forth as the breath of God, the breath of God, breath of God, eternal life. I thank you.
they come from the east and the west. They come hungry of heart with burdens to lay down. They come seeking to win a starry crown. O gracious one, the hours of peace fresh from the hand of God pour over the earth as an oil of anointing and our being is illumined from levels of cosmic illumination to new levels by his expanding mind and by the buoyancy of his peace. The peace of God knows no limitation. The peace of God is an expansive condition of cosmos, of the radiant spheres of other worlds, of systems beyond light years incomprehensible, charged with the admission of the sacred fire victory, and waves of compassion from the heart of God that have seen the struggle starts of the disciples of light and has assisted them Beams through the night glow with greater brilliance than beams through the day. And it is the strange contradistinction of light and shadow that enables the devotees of truth to appreciate the waves of divine bliss as they contrast those conditions with the world's confusion and abuses of holy law. I come this night then from the portals of Shambhala. The ivory throne upon which I sit tonight is especially builded in order to convey to the hearts of those who are with me of the great love of God for all things both great and small. Our ivory is not composed of animal substance but of the power of light creating by transmutation's ray and by precipitation's flame the desires of our heart. And yet we are not without appreciation for the great lumbering beast that serve the people of India and the Far East and render unto them relief from many heavy loads and burdens. Elemental life, precious ones, must always be considered. For the things that are formed and the things that were formed are not themselves guilty in particle or principle of having rendered unto any harm except the reflection of that unnatural discord which mankind have imposed upon animal life and also upon flora as well. The world 
will someday master the challenges that now beset them upon the path when they tire of the wheel of mortal reverberation when they tire of the battle of the senses this ox cart pace cannot satisfy cosmic exigencies it cannot satisfy the deliberations of our councils it cannot satisfy the waves of peace from the heart of God that would assuage the tears of mankind shed for all the warrings which go on among the members of the body of God upon the planet within religious movements within the family of nations within the households of men the din is great and the Lord has ridden forth upon a chariot of golden substance to penetrate the illusions and facades of men and to show how that the ways of peace must be made known I would like tonight to chide those among mankind who will not acknowledge the presence of peace and the need to teach it. The simplest conditions which are not appropriated by men which are a virtue must be taught and mankind must be made to know what is virtue and value. The diamond, precious one, is esteemed for its value. Were it to be devaluated in the marks of men, you would find, O oh, gracious one, that this rare gem would suddenly become plentiful and the mines would open up and the markets would be flooded with diamonds because it would take many to make up the value of one today there is a certain value in the minds of men to holding back on the sale of these jewels in order to keep the price up in the market. Understand then that a value must be placed upon peace and a value must be placed upon spiritual bread and upon the necessities of spiritual life. The world today is an hungered and they shall be fed and teachers shall go forth to assuage their thirst with the water of life and to satisfy and gratify their hunger with the bread of life not in an opulence of mortal intelligent substance shall the battle be won but by an outpouring of spiritual treasures the radiance of the east has gone forth the enigmas held fast through the century have traveled unto the ends of the earth and how safe they are from prying eyes for who can understand them who can appreciate them who can take from them the resident spiritual power only the elect as a nut with a shell so hard resists all cracking so the spiritual germs of truth have been locked in metaphor in symbol in enigma 
in mystery and within the heart of life. And peace has not been known by men, for they are more concerned with the paltry matters which generate wars than they are with the treasures of God which engender the ways of peace. The ways of peace they have not known indeed. Yet, ere the year shall complete her cycle and her turning in space, and ere the twisting of this age shall be deciphered, event shall come to mankind which shall awaken many. We bring and bear no bitter prophecy, only the fruit of hope and desire for a better world, for a pure heart among the children of men. Now I would speak of a heart that like a flame burns within. I would speak of a heart whose soft glow has suffused forth into the world with the penetrability of the radiance of peace. I would speak of a feeling that causes men to desire victory. I would speak of a yearning for truth that will not be denied the tablets of God's law. I will speak of little hearts made great by basking in his brightness. I will speak of great hearts magnified into cosmic beings because of the vastness of their hope and determination. And I will say to the years, O oh years, you are shining pathways of light down which the pilgrims travel to the eternal abode, there to find security and rest for weariness of heart and mind. There is no way of such delight as the way of peace. There is no way of such delight as to permit strife to cease. There is no way of such delight as ends all woe, as to find that hope so bright, whose holy glow will pass the portals of the mind and heart, and let the soul of man make fresh start in overcoming all that ought not ever to have been, to accept God freedom for all men, and see the way made plain in faith that wipes out fear, in presence of the light when I am here. Oh, come and now rejoice. Make bold your heart tonight, for God's great glow has filled the night with hope, and music sounds her great delight as bowers fragrant with the peace of hearts surround us all with God's own hand of love, securing now and every hour some new triumph by his flaming power over dust and mud and slime the flame of God makes all sublime. I come in peace, I come in love, I charge your hearts with comfort's dove. I am Gautama from Shambhala afar. The door is oped, the gates ajar. We wait your coming here tonight to feel our flame of God delight, to keep and make your robes all white. 
my faith and love and hope's delight and charity that frees us all and makes the world a new place tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow thundering then down all the cycled realms of time with victory's voice I am divine, shatter matrices of evil old, and let our life emblazon bold upon the pages pure before you then. Keep faith, keep heart, keep love then within your mind, a guardian of the way I know no higher word of praise than faithful servant of the Lord he is so blessed adored by all the cosmic hosts by all the sons of heaven our lives are changed and fashioned by his leaven Secure one loaf, one Eucharist of light. I am a fragrant, fragment, scintillating white, radiant, sunburst, splendor, shining fair. I come tonight to make a holy prayer before the great white brotherhood at Teton Grand. I come, I come, all stand and rejoice, 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 for God has said, I shall make all things new instead. Why wipe them out? Why destruct when I am nigh to ever make a new construct? a rightful act, a purity that comes to make and keep the world all free. Oh, thank you for your love so shining in your heart. Oh, thank you for the hope that span to start a new resolution for the right. Perhaps this year you'll win the fight and if you are denied the total triumph, keep right on and know that where I am, I'll make a little prayer for you, each one and all, that step by step his hand you'll hold and up the stairway glistening gold to where the triumph crown lies fair upon a silken pillow woven of strands of God's own hair. His love rays saturated all. They are so nigh thy feet are shod with holy call. The call that will not be denied the call that cannot be denied, the call that triumphs at your side, for where you are, there God is too. Together you shall win the few who triumph in each day must become the many, this I pray. Please be seated. O oh, brothers of Almighty God, beloved Sanat Kumara, most august Lady Master Venus, members of the great cosmic hierarchy and heavenly emissaries 
Our hearts rejoice at your presence here, the glory of your rejoicing before his face. We welcome each tiny elemental form, each angel being born. We welcome men, one and all. We welcome those who love we welcome those who wish to learn to love. We welcome all the sons of men, for we have vowed to defend the faith this year as never before. Brothers, there is a waning in the world of men of faith. There is a waning in the world of men of hope and there is a condition abroad upon the whole earth which has brought about spiritual famine manifesting even as material famine in our own India. Mankind have denied their God. They have denied reality. They have denied purity. They have denied all that God is. And in their denial, echoing down the halls of life, has come the wake of frightful apparitions, threatening to engulf vast areas of life with catastrophic conditions. Now then, our brothers, we call to thee for a release of great assistance for the sake of those remnants of our spiritual brotherhood who have gone forth as spiritual teachers to the children of men. We ask that they be secured this night and given especial protection from all harm and destructivity. We must, above all, keep alive and fan the flame of hope upon this planet in this awful and terrible hour. We cannot permit losses to occur in our own bands of devotees or chilas who are devoted to right action. We must do all to intensify these children of the light now embodied in mortal form so that they will gain spiritual stature and not lose that wonderful opportunity which has been given unto them. This is a moment of decision when heaven must decide to render assistance our brothers beyond the merit of mankind or even many among our teaching band who have been caught and snared from time to time by the mortal strands of unholy delusion. We must not permit that they shall then be denied the solace of heaven this hour. And therefore we plead with all of you who have this great God flame within you burning upon your own heart's altar to this night give great assistance to mankind in their hours of peril and roll back the tides of predictability, those conditions which are so plainly revealed to the eyes of the discerning that they also may recognize that there now has come a moment of the turning when God shall wipe away tears from the eyes of men through the power of great love. And therefore, I ask you, beloved holy ones upon Venus, to lower the great chalice that contains a thought form for the year.
thought form for the year. Is a hand, a right hand, from above, holding a golden key with three notches in the key, and on the side of the key the words L-O-V-E, love. From on high, God's hand holds the key which is love, by which all doors may open to every devotee of the Most High. Love is the key that opens every door, and if the doors of the hearts of men are to respond to God, it must be by a great outpouring of divine love this year. And this is the attitude of wisdom. Let him who has an ear to hear, hear what the Spirit saith unto all men. Love seeks not herself, but to bestow upon the beloved every gracious gift and the simplicity of love in the childlike way is the key to mankind's victory, to mankind's victory that can open every door. Therefore, the three notches are defined as making this key capable of opening the doors below in the realm of the material the doors of mind and the doors of memory to all that love can bestow and all that love is and all that God would make mankind to be. These simple statements are charged with the essence of man's freedom. Without these statements in action, mankind can but come to naught. And with these statements in action, love then becomes the key that bestows the grace of heaven upon earth in every age. This is our will, our brothers, this symbol form from on high for this year is a message old and strong, a message that casts out fear. This, our message, charges all with power to win, to raise us all. For those below and those above are children of the heart of love. They came from God, they go to him. They are his hope, his future aim. Upon the sky where God does write, there is a ray of mighty light. Love is written in the air. Love is written in our prayer. Love is written full of hope. Love is written, let none mope. Love confines not, love is free. Love is beauty, tis the key. Anchor then within your soul love's great flame to make you whole. I am the power that charges light through the darkness of the night. I am the flame, the lantern high. I am the peace from Shambhala sky. I came in love 
I leave in love. I came to give. I came to live. I come tonight to make you right, to make you light. Purify your souls tonight. Accept the challenge of this hour. Accept the gift of heaven's power. Accept the key, the way to be. I am, I am forever free. In peace, in love, in courage rare, I say go forth and conquer there for you in summit realm tonight I say are chosen of the light to Colorado you would go to hold his banner let it glow it matters not that you've been frail the power of light shall never fail. I am is God in you, I think. I am the nectar, quaff that drink, and watch the soul expand within. Twill break the iron bands of sin and change you in a twinkling eye to victors in that beauteous sky where souls like stars do twinkle bold, where souls like stars are shining gold. We all are one in that great light. His star is beaming bright tonight. Sanat Kumara, Lord of Flame, we see you go in victory's name. This meeting was a wondrous one. It spoke of grace from out the sun, of days of old when only light existed and the power of right. And now we go to win the world. A mighty banner I unfurl, Shambhala, rules the earth today in God's own name and God's own way we say to all the hordes of dark depart depart this very park for God is here and here to stay I am Gautama peace is my way I thank you and I accept your love and I love you still, and I always will. Blessings from Shambhala to all the children of the Great White Brotherhood everywhere. This 1966 year of decision, when the Christ manifestation of the golden key of love is given to man as the challenge of faith in action. Thank you.